Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too, and on today's video we're going to be doing a quick and dirty undervolt of your AMD Ryzen processor on an MSI motherboard. Your motherboard may not be the same, but the principles probably will be. Want to find out how to do it? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to undervolt your processor. Now, you're probably thinking, well, why the heck would I want to do that, Mike? Well, there's a few reasons. You may actually get better performance out of it. That is potentially going to happen. Uh, your processor quite likely will run a little bit cooler. And also, you'll be saving energy, less noise, all those kind of usual things. So if any one of those things actually does appeal to you, then potentially you might want to do this. It's actually very simple to do, and there's kind of not a great deal that can go wrong here. What I would suggest is before you do anything, obviously back up your settings, etc., etc. I'll show you how to do that shortly on the motherboard. You can actually set a profile, so if things do go pear-shaped, you can revert back. Something else I would say as well, a very, very strong warning, obviously. Potentially, this can make your system unstable. So do prepare for that if this is in some way a main production machine or something which is mission critical to what you do or to make a living or any of those things, then clearly you probably don't want to be doing this. But if you don't mind having a fiddle and you want to have a little bit of a gamble, see if you can get a bit more performance or make your processor a little bit cooler, let's get on with it. Okay, so starting off, this is a desktop on my PC. So this is Ryzen 5 3600. Just done a quick Cinebench score. I would suggest if you can do this, also I've got hardware monitor open. I'll leave links for both of these in the video description. You can just pick up Cinebench R23 from the Windows Store. So just click on the little thing down there, the little handbag from Microsoft Store, and you can pick it up. It doesn't cost anything. Same with hardware monitor, no charge there. You can just download it and just keep an eye on the temperatures. Now, obviously, you don't need to do any of this if you don't want to. You can use other methods of testing, but Cinebench does put quite an extreme load on the processor, a very unnatural load, I should add. But generally, if it's going to be stable within this, then you should find it stable in general within Windows also. So things to take a note of are obviously your temperatures. So we've had a lowest recorded temperature, 34.1 degrees Celsius. Highest was 68.6. And our Cinebench score here was 9,299 points. So not too bad. So we've got our baseline results here. So we can close this down now and we want to restart and actually go into the BIOS on the computer. So it's going to restart when we're restarting, just going to smash the delete key or whatever key is appropriate to gain access to your BIOS. Yes, restart anyway. So yeah, just keep on mashing the delete key or F2 or whatever it is for your particular motherboard. And not all motherboards will have this facility. So if there's a board out there which doesn't have it, don't panic. Um, it's just one of those things. Not all boards will allow this kind of modification. And here we go. So this is our MSI ClickBoss 5. This is the... Um, B550 Gaming Plus. I had to remember what it was then. So what we want to do is we want to go into overclock settings on this particular board. Obviously, if you're using a different board, you may need to go into something like uh, change your modes, like from easy to advanced, etc., etc. We'll try and update this video and do it on various different platforms, just so um, if your platform isn't covered here, we might cover it in another one. So do stay subscribed and check out the latest videos. You may find your particular motherboard isn't featured. Anyway, so we're going to go into OC, or overclocking, as that is where we need to be for this particular board. So CPU core voltage is what we want to be going around playing with, so click on that. Oh yeah, we don't need to go into advanced, so you can go straight in as normal. So we've got a couple of options there, so you've got auto, override mode, offset mode, override and offset mode, and AMD overclocking. So in this particular instance, because we want to undervolt our processor, or feed it less voltage, we want to go into our offset mode. So what this is going to do is going to make it so that even though the processor is looking at different voltages at all times, as you can see there, the number is actually changing. It is a variable. So rather than just setting a specific voltage of saying 1.25 or 1.35 or whatever the case may be for your particular processor, what we can do is just take off a very small fragment or a percentage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into offset mode mark and we've got the option for auto plus or minus. So if you want to add more voltage, you can click on plus. If you want to take away voltage, click on minus. So we're going to choose minus, and then underneath that, we've got our offset voltage. So this is going to be how much into the minus you want to go. Now, most AM4 platform boards will support various levels. Now, depending on the processor, how many cores, etc., etc., this is going to be variable for your particular system. 
Now for this particular system, I've uh, used a few different settings and they've all been pretty decent and remain stable. Now I would suggest starting off with something quite moderate like 0 0.050 and that's gonna take off uh, effectively 500 millivolts, 0 0.05. So at the moment where you can see where it says CPU core voltage, imagine we're gonna take off five off there. So effectively it's gonna be running at 1.32 rather than 1.37. So basically you just take off your 0.5, simple subtraction in maths. Now obviously you can do that, you can put in any voltage you want there to take off, but you may find that your voltage may drop a little bit too regularly or a little bit too much and could potentially cause system failure or system crash in. Now you can, if you want to, you can go in and change things like your voltage drop or your V droop. So you can uh, enhance that so it will kind of mitigate that. Essentially, this is supposed to be quick and dirty, so all we want to do is just reduce the voltage a little bit, just enough to lower those temperatures or potentially get a little bit more performance. Now, we're going to try 0.5. You can put in there 0.75. You could, if you want to, put 0.1 if you wanted to, but that is probably going to be a bit much without further tweaking. You can, of course, if you want to, just put in 0.25. It will effectively go up in quarters, so 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, etc., etc., so it is going to be kind of granular in that respect. So anyway, we put in our information there, so that's fine, and all we need to do now is close this so we can change. So it says now what we're doing, so we've gone from auto to offset mode. Our offset mode mark is going to be minus, and our voltage is going to be 0 0.05. Now obviously if you put something in there completely wrong, it is going to fail, so let's uh, cancel that a second. What you can do is you have got the option to save profiles for your overclocking. Press escape and you get the menus on the other side. So we wanna to go to OC profiles. And at this point here, you can change your profiles, save them, load them, etc., etc. do what you wanna do. Um, I'm not gonna bother at the moment, so, but you can do if you want to you go in there, set a profile for it. You could say when there, what voltage you've got it set to, those kinds of things. So if you wanna play with a few profiles, you can do the switch between them, but yeah, entirely up to you. So it's still got our settings there. So let's come out of there. Again, information's there. So we're gonna reboot now. And we'll go back into Windows and we'll test our new settings. Okay, just a little update there, just to let you know. I've turned on Precision Boost Overdrive and our scores are within about 100 points of what they were previously. But we've now got a 0 0.05 millivolt or 0 0.0500 millivolt undervolt. So performance is coming back up. Temps are going down as well. Temps are looking good. Maximum of about 66 Celsius. So yeah, turn on Precision Boost Overdrive and you should find things are a little bit better. So there you go, there are the options, where they are on the motherboard. Obviously your motherboard may be slightly different, but at least you know kind of what you're looking for, just looking for that offset mode, set it to minus, put in a different figure, so something like 0.025 or 0.50, experiment. Have a play with it, see what works for you. Like I said, if this is on one of your main production systems, then uh, yeah, clearly back up your settings just in case, and it can cause instability, and it may actually harm performance. So do bear that in mind. In general, depending what the temperatures are and the system, you might find it better off to use the Curve Optimizer, which is built into the AMD Ryzen software. That is if you've got Ryzen 5000 series processor support. Uh, you can check that out in the video we did, which is gonna be up here and also linked in the video description. That's definitely worth doing. It takes kind of some of the guesswork out of it and actually does give some really tangible improvements. Although again, it's gonna depend on your system, power supply, motherboard, etc., etc. Anyway, that's gonna wrap things up for now. I'll be Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.